Hey, it's Rachel Cook, your modern mentor. And today's episode is for anyone who's ever had to have a hard conversation at work, which is everyone. Because those conversations, the ones that make your head sweat and your stomach clench, they need to happen in order for us to get a better outcome. So how can we do it in a way that's empathetic and strategic and sure to maintain your relationship? Here are some of my thoughts. Last week, I was catching up with my friend Sam. When I told him I had to go, he gave me the sad eyes and the giant sigh of a guy not looking forward to something. I asked him what was up, and he told me one of his colleagues had been dropping balls lately, like a lot of them. A missed client deliverable, a messy meeting that wasn't well prepared for, an unpaid invoice that resulted in late fees, the list kind of went on. I'm not his boss, Sam told me, so it doesn't feel like my place to give him feedback, but something's really got to give here. Whether a friend has disappointed you one too many times, or your boss just won't give you a straight answer about that promotion, or your doctor's advice leaves you feeling like she hasn't heard a word you've said, you've been left. You've been left feeling sad or scared or hurt or mad at some point. We've all been in situations requiring us to have that icky conversation. They're hard and they're awkward and we postpone them until we can't anymore. So if you are or have ever been where Sam is, let's talk about how to have one of these difficult conversations well. First, choose your battles. Before you dive into the difficult, be clear about what you want. Because if all you want right now is to vent, then phone a friend, friend, and Do not engage with the object of your angst. A great question to ask yourself is, is this annoying or is this a problem? Your teammate who checks his phone one too many times during your presentation may be annoying, but your teammate who continuously cuts you off while you're speaking, that's a problem. We're focused here on the problematic situations, the actions or behaviors that are infringing on your ability to be successful. In Sam's case, he was dealing with a problem. There were business impacts resulting from his colleagues' misses. Having a positive, difficult conversation begins with choosing the right conversation to have. Next, create a safe open. Okay, with the right topic chosen, you know, something you're actually ready to solve, it's time to open the conversation. You could just cut to the chase and say, hey, we need to talk about all the balls you're dropping lately. The upside here is there is no ambiguity about what's on your mind. The downside, do you really need me to spell it out? Imagine being on the receiving end of an open like that. Your ears would smoke, your eyes would burn, your claws would come out. Problem solving in that state is a pretty hard thing to do. And yeah, I've tried this approach with my poor husband. I can assure you it doesn't work out. So what's the alternative? You do want to be honest, but also kind and empathetic. Something more like, Hey, I was wondering if we could talk about a few projects that have kind of gone pear-shaped lately. I'd love to share my experience of the past month and to hear yours and maybe to talk about what we can do to make sure everything stays on track. In this second approach, you're still letting your colleague know something difficult is coming, but you're inviting a dialogue. You're not making an accusation and you're letting them know you're hungry for ideas. This will leave room for real conversation and problem solving. Next, Stick to the facts. Imagine Sam approaches his colleague saying, you're not paying attention, you've stopped caring about your work, and you're not thinking about the impact this is having on people around you. I mean, this should yield a positive response, right? Okay, not so much. There are way too many assumptions in here that Sam is making. Sam has no way of knowing what his colleague cares or thinks about. So let's give Sam a redo. Imagine instead he says, Hey, I'm concerned about the feedback we got from the client on that late report. And finance needs us to justify the late charges on that invoice. The cost comes out of our budget. Any insight on what happened? In this second go around, Sam is leaning on facts. Why those things happened? Well, the colleague gets to weigh in there. But the fact that they happened seems pretty hard to deny. Facts give you something real to work with. Just make sure your intel is accurate. And don't make assumptions about why somebody may have dropped a ball. They probably do care. They may be dealing with something difficult, but give them space. Next, get ready for some feels. You've laid out the truth and you've done so with kindness and compassion, but maybe you're feeling angry that you've had to pick up the slack and maybe your colleague feels stung by the truth. 
it does, as they say, sometimes hurt. Just be prepared for the possibility that having this conversation the right way doesn't guarantee all rainbows and sunshine. It still may be painful. If emotions escalate quickly, just be ready to take a time out and agree to come back once people have had a chance to collect themselves and regroup. And please know that emotion is not a signal that you've done a bad job. It just means that you and the other person are human. Also, fear of emotion is not an excuse to avoid the difficult conversation. Next, zip your lips. You've made your case, you've invited their perspective, and now it's time to hear it openly. Maybe it's true they don't care about clients or the work anymore. Or maybe they're dealing with a sick family member, or they haven't received a critical training, or they're receiving conflicting requests from the client, or, and I know this is hard, Maybe you weren't clear in setting an expectation or a timeline. Your job here is to listen. And if you do it well, often a solution will present itself. Also, be prepared to take some accountability as well. Maybe they need a leave of absence, or maybe you need to sign them up for that training. Or maybe you both need to do a better job of setting boundaries with the client. But your goal here is to identify a possible step in the right direction. And finally, propose your next step. Often the next step includes action on both of your parts. Having listened and listened well, suggest what might come next. Maybe you'll commit to putting your expectations in writing and they'll send you weekly updates so you both know you're on track. Maybe you offer to take a priority off their plate or maybe they choose just to take a leave. There's not a right answer. There's only the one that you can both agree will move you forward, even if just a tiny step. Using this approach may not land you in a place of perfection, but likely it will do the job of opening a conversation, addressing some key issues, identifying a possible solution, and critically, preserving your relationship. I hope you'll join me next week for another great episode. Until then, you can follow Modern Mentor on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Check out my website at leadabovenoise.com or follow me on the Modern Mentor podcast page on LinkedIn. Thanks so much for listening and have a successful week. Modern Mentor is a quick and dirty tips podcast. It's audio engineered by Dan Firebend with script editing by Adam Cecil. Our podcast and advertising operations specialist is Morgan Christensen. Our digital operations specialist is Holly Hutchings. Our marketing and publicity assistant is Davina Tomlin. And our intern is Brendan Peacock.